Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Sunday. It is the 14th day of November, year of our Lord, 2021. This is the penultimate Sunday in the church year. Next Sunday is the Sunday of fulfillment, the last Sunday of the church year, and then the new church year begins uh, right after Thanksgiving with uh, the first Sunday in Advent. Uh, Thanksgiving service will be Thanksgiving Eve. That's a week from this coming Wednesday, not this coming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. right here in this sanctuary where I'm standing now, a service of prayer and preaching, beautiful service. Uh, and we'll give thanks to the Lord for as many blessings that he showers upon us and our nation. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter, verses 36 through 56. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you could not watch with me one hour. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep, and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send more than twelve legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. And that is the gospel of the Lord. Beautiful reading. Of course, it's our Lord's arrest. Tomorrow we'll move into his trial and move into his crucifixion, we see how he is praying and, and how this begins in the Garden of Gethsemane, and his soul is very troubled, and we're told elsewhere that, you know, sweat like drops of blood are coming from his forehead. I mean, he is bearing the weight of the whole world on his shoulders. He is sin. He, in his baptism, became sin, and he knows what he's about to face. He's about to face punishment for that sin. That's the punishment that we earn. Our sin is about to be put to death in him. And it's going to be brutal. All the, the, the full cup, this cup that he speaks of, is the cup of God's wrath. 
and he's going to drink it down to the dregs. He is going to experience separation from God that we won't have to, and we'll never have to even imagine because of our Lord Jesus Christ. He knows what's coming. And notice what he says. Well, you know, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Um, and then he says, as he addresses the Father, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. And then nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Not as I will, but as you will. This is how much you are loved, my brothers and sisters. It is the will of the Father that his Son would become sin, and that sin would put that, that he would, would feel the full weight of those words, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, which he will speak from the cross for us. That this is God's plan, it's the only plan, that we might be with him forever, God's plan to save us, to rescue us through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, which now covers us, that resurrected blood. And it's going to be brutal, but it has to be done. As, as this uh, unfolds, we see, as it, as it comes to its uh, conclusion, you know, when, when the, uh, one of his uh, um, disciples picks up a sword and cuts off the high priest's ear, he says, you know, th this is not the way it's supposed to be. Don't you think I can call down an army? But this has to be fulfilled. Um, the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. You can think of Isaiah, the suffering servant. All these passages that talk about what the Christ is going to do and how it's going to put, be done, that we are going to be saved. So, uh, remarkable texts. Jesus goes willingly to this arrest, submits to our hand to put him to death. Uh, human beings, the creature, becomes the tool in the hand of God to work the will of God for their own salvation, for your salvation. Remarkable, remarkable love that God demonstrates for us in this act, both our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father. That This is what we are worth. Whenever you feel like you're not worth anything, you think of this. You think that the Father so wanted you to be with him forever that he was willing to send his son, and his son was willing to submit to that will of the Father and to suffer for us. All right. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gifts that you have bestowed upon us this day through your precious word and the blessed sacrament. Sustain us throughout the week ahead that we, being filled with Christ in this place, may go out and serve you as we love and serve our neighbors. Bless us with a good rest tonight that we may face the week ahead refreshed and filled with your joy and peace. Be with those who are crying out to you, those who are crying out for healing, and according to your gracious will, place your healing hand upon them. Bless our leaders, our president, uh, President Joe Biden, our governor, uh, Governor Pritzker, all in authority, that they might be eager to do what is pleasing in your sight. Grant us, men and women, who are eager to do your will. Uh, bless them that they may especially have the courage and strength to stand for those who have no voice of their own, particularly the unborn and the aged. Heavenly Father, grant uh, safety to those who are serving to protect the freedoms that we enjoy even now. 
All these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'll sing a little bit of hymn number 430, a beautiful Lenten hymn. My song is Love Unknown. My song is love unknown. My Savior's love to me. Love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be. Oh, who am I? that for my sake my Lord should take frail flesh and die. He came from his blessed throne, salvation to bestow, but men made strange and none the long for Christ would know. But, O oh, my friend, my friend indeed, who at my need his life did spend. That stands as one and two of seven of hymn number 430, My Song is Love Unknown. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a pleasant evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.